everybody, welcome back. Day two underway here, TSOL 2022. My next guest is Meg Eubank, and Meg, Teacher of the Year. Yay, congratulations. Thank you. How exciting. So TESOL and National Geographic Learning named you as the 2022 Teacher of the Year. Yes. Tell me Very how you exciting. feel. <laughs> I'm still in awe. I think I'm still processing the fact that I won this amazing award. It's very exciting and, um, and very surprising too. I really didn't expect it. How did it come about? How do you first get nominated? So it started back in the summer of 2021 or maybe in the spring of 2021 actually. Going back, I had attended the virtual TESOL conference. And after that conference, we were getting a lot of emails. My coworker and I both attended the virtual version. We were getting a lot of emails about different ways to get involved and be engaged. And the email came in, nominate somebody for the TESOL Teacher of the Year Award. And this was the height of the pandemic, spring of 2021, feeling really worn down. We've been working really hard. And um, my wonderful coworker, supervisor at the school where I was teaching, Jessica Malley, who also deserves to be a teacher of the year. She's my teacher of the year in my book. Um, she, we were sitting together in a meeting and I said, you know what? I know we're really frustrated right now with everything. Why don't we nominate each other for this award? Wow. And it'll just help us feel a little better. So we did so, and then months went by, and you sort of forget about it. You know, you're not thinking of, along those lines. Uh -huh. It was just something in the moment. It was like, you know what? You deserve recognition. I deserve recognition. We've been working hard, so let's do that for each other. And so then a couple, year, or a couple months later, I received an email from TESOL that said that I was in the finalist group, and they wanted some more information from me. And so I submitted a conference proposal about the work that I was doing and what I would present if I were chosen. And um, then a few months after that, I got the news that I was chosen. So it was, a, the nomination process was an involved process. It involved um, letters of recommendation from supervisors and coworkers, documents from students. I had a student letter that a student had written me an email at the end of the school year in 2020, just saying how much he enjoyed my class and what he, he liked what I did. Um, I had uh, little essays and explanations of different things that I had been working on, ways that I was involved in my school community and um, different ways that I, I promoted diversity in my classes and all sorts of things. So there were certain prompts that I answered. And um, it was just, it was, a, it was kind of great to think through all the work that I had done too and be able to explain all of that and then share it with TESOL. Okay. And so then they announced it in January of this year, and here I am now Yay, in Pittsburgh. You did it. <laughs> how you've been a part of TESOL as a member for a little, a couple of years. What you know, how what kinds of things have you gotten from TESOL that you feel like have helped you advance in your career? Well, TESOL is one of those professional organizations that's not just a professional organization, but it's also a really great community of people and a community of practice that pulls together everybody from all over the world. Um, and in, in getting this award too, I keep thinking that like, I can't believe I won it out of all the teachers in the world because everybody worked so hard during this pandemic. And honestly, everybody who taught during the pandemic deserves some kind of award because it was, it was a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, TESOL was very supportive through that whole experience. And the website alone has so many resources. Um, it's a huge network of teachers and professionals from all over the globe, which is really amazing. When I attended the virtual conference last year, the sessions were incredible, of course, and all the ideas that were shared, but my favorite part was meeting all of these people from all over the globe. And I started to connect with people. We followed each other on LinkedIn. We started communicating and sharing ideas and share and just connecting with each other. And then here this year, we gathered together in person and also online, which I love the hybrid format because it makes it accessible for people. Uh -huh. um, and I met so many people that I had befriended online and now we're meeting in person. And it's just, it's the coolest experience. So I just, I highly recommend TESOL to everybody because it's one of those things that 
the, between TESOL Press and all of the books that they have, all of the webinars and the professional learning experiences and professional development that you can take, take part in. Um, the convention is incredible because you get to talk to people in real life or virtually and get to <laughs> share ideas. So, and there's also so many different leadership opportunities that I'm only really just beginning to explore. But I think this is going to be something that I'm a part of for the rest of my career now. Fantastic. So you're presenting tomorrow. I uh, or today, me. actually. Oh, today. Later yeah, today. later That's today. Right. So mm -hmm. tell me about your topic. I'm talking about building community in an age of isolation. And it's sort of talking about my experiences during the pandemic and what I learned from that. Mm -hmm. But it's applicable to any kind of classroom. Um, how do you take people that don't know each other and often share different cultures and have different experiences and they're all thrown together in one classroom and how do you build a community out of that? And now especially with online learning and when we have so many people isolated in so many different ways, um, even if we're face to face, there have been masking, social distancing, uh, less community and social events, you know, so it's been a very isolating experience. And English language learners are already very isolated because there's language barriers and culture shock and all sorts of, you know, you're just new to a place. And so I'm talking about different ways to make things to build a community, to make your classroom into a family of sorts. And so I'll talk about curriculum building and how I structure my classes and some things that I came up with during the pandemic with online teaching, um, as well as things that can be applied to face-to-face -face classroom as well. But a lot of those things are talking about how do you structure your classes so that they're accessible to everyone, especially if they're trying to access things from online. Um, how do you make it engaging so that it's really, so that people are participating, they're creating materials, they're developing things themselves and they're engaging with materials. And it's not just watching a video or looking at a lecture or reading something and reporting back. Um, and actually having conversations and meaningful conversations with, you, with each other. Um, making things relevant for the student and making it personalized so that it actually applies to their life and it applies to what they actually need to know and learn. Um, and also social aspects. So how do you turn the online classroom into a social experience as well as an academic experience? Because there is that really important social component of belonging and connectedness that everybody needs. So. Um, I'm talking about all of those things using some strategies. I'll give some specific techniques and strategies in my examples, but um, it's, it's all about looking at, at students as the human beings that they are, getting to know them personally, learning their strengths and the value that everybody brings to the classroom and how we can all learn from each other and connect with each other and through collaborative learning and really engaging, um, interesting, relevant teaching. You teach at the college level. Is yes. your presentation geared toward college level teachers or do you feel like K-12 can I, glean from this as well? Both. Um, I'm talking about all my experiences during the pandemic and I've worked from, just during the pandemic alone, um, I taught adult students, I taught college level students, I also taught middle school and high school. So it kind of covers the whole gamut of at least, you know, t young teen to adult students. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you, Meg Eubank. We appreciate your time. Congratulations, TESOL Teacher of the Year. Thank you so much. I'm so honored. Enjoy the rest of the convention. Thank you.